control. What a day it's been. I would say good morning, but it is good night. <laughs> We have, I, we've used this we day up. I've used this day up. So go ahead and list off the things that I've done today. I emptied 10 boxes. We have a few pictures, but not pictures of everything we've yeah. accomplished. Some things are still partial. <laughs> I made refrigerator pickles. Doesn't that look cool? I saw it in the Mother Earth News Magazine and I thought, oh darn. I can't make any because I didn't put in cucumbers. Then I went to the farmer's market <laughs> and he had an abundance of cucumbers. So now we got pickles. Yes, we do. Awesome. So you make them and then you set them out for a night. Only I've set them out all day. And then you stick them in the refrigerator for several weeks and you can eat them all that time. Get out of here, bug. <laughs> Um, what else? What did you do today? Did you get pictures of the chicken tractor? I did. We're not finished. Uh, we made a lot of progress. Uh, we're designing as we go and we're using what we have. Those are, are two <sighs> factors that tend to slow things down. Quick review where we are on this chicken tractor. We've got the frame built. You notice we're doing these reinforcements in the corner. Very, very sturdy. We've cut both ends of this skid to where it's curved so that when it's pulling it's not going to dig in. So uh, we'll, we'll be dealing with that without any trouble. These PVC, this is PVC that we already had and they had been cut at about five feet. So uh, instead of throwing them away, uh, it made the distance if we used them on both sides a little taller than if we just used a uh, uh, actually, they're more than five feet. They're probably closer to six yeah. feet. I, I, I misspoke. So it makes it a little taller than if we just use a 10-footer all the way across here. We, we knew we needed a purlin in the top to keep things steady, so we figured well, why not just run the PVCs, just drill a hole in here big enough for them to fit through, run them through there, fasten them down, and then we put this one by two on top as additional support and also because we're going to have a tarp on top of here, there's nothing jagged sticking up uh, to where the, the tarp can sit on top of this without any trouble and it gives us a little more to fasten the uh, chicken wire to that we'll be placing up there. Some of them were already bent, some of them are new to being bent, so if I go through here you'll see that they're not completely even right now. But once we get the ends the chickens on... chickens aren't going to care. They're going to say, feed me. That's all they're going to care And we about. really are not PVC people at all anymore. But we had these and we're trying to save money as we go. And so that's what we did. Boy, that one on the end is down there is just kind of woo. <laughs> well, what's going to happen is we're going to build a frame now. We'll show that next. And that will actually pull these. We'll, we'll, we'll pull these to straighten them out just a little bit and it'll cause both ends to be in a little bit better shape. So door at this end or that end. I don't know which is the front and back. We haven't figured that out yet. One end will have a door. The other end will have some nest boxes that we can get into from the outside. A little more progress. We've got the door frame in place. We're going to be building the door now to go on here. We'll swing out like this and be able to set up against these two and pass them on here. The back, as you can see, is ready for the nesting box to be put right in that opening to where it's going to be partially in, partially out, so we can get into it from the outside. And uh, once those two pieces are in, we're going to wrap it in hardware wire, put chicken wire over it, get us a tarp to fit over like the back half or so, and we're going to be ready for chickens. We also put chicken wire all the way around the garden. The 50 foot garden. Because those little baby bunnies are eating uh, my beans. Well, we've seen one of them in there again. They're still not big enough that the wire we have stops them from getting in. And some of the beans have gotten small. <laughs> gone. <laughs> so, and but then. They're gone. They're, they're out now. They can't get in there now. So anyway, it's been a super productive day. Um, we mow, I mowed. I mow because there's so many things that I can't do that he does. He, so I do the mowing because he does stuff I can't do. Well, we need to get you a riding lawnmower. Yes, we do. <laughs> Make it go a lot faster. Okay, so there's a couple of things we want to talk about. There, there is one other thing that we saw today. Our squash, one of the plants, the, the yeah, cool. zucchini. Was it the zucchini? Uh-huh. It's got some setting on it. 
little guys. Little people on it, or little squash on it. Now, our experience has been typically the first two or three kind of wither. They just don't make it. Well, so, they did in Oregon. But well, no, the first two and three on most of the plants kind of... Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see. So I, I, think, these we had, I think we really had too much water and we're these being careful look about really that here. Although the rains are contributing a lot. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about when you're eating. Um, I put this on Facebook today, but I want to make sure that you understand. Do not be hungry. This is not a diet of deprivation at all. Um, this is a diet of being able to eat. And we've also... You know, we're not counting points and you can only get so many points. Uh, that's not what we're doing. Um, now, we don't, we're not saying engorge yourself, but... No, eat enough at, the, at one setting. And then if you need to eat two hours later, eat again. But eat the four food areas that we talked to you about. And, and make certain that you're doing that frequently so that you don't feel inclined to eat a bunch. Because eating a lot all at one time, your, your body doesn't process that like it normally would and make use of it. It's going to put it in the places you don't want to keep it. So, do not go hungry. But yes. I will tell you this, when you eat carbohydrates, if you only eat carbohydrates, your blood sugar is going to go up and then down. And you're going to be starving. All the so time. So make sure that when you are eating, you're eating the four items, the fat, the protein, the carbohydrate, and the vegetable. They work together beautifully and they, they satisfy you and they make where all of them are used, they become useful to you and they do what they're supposed to do. Right. So, um, at the what, what I'm showing on this video is the second half of what I showed yesterday. Yesterday you saw me in a store uh, showing all the food that you needed to eliminate, seven different areas. Today is the follow-up one. You're going to show what is replaced. Because this video was made in Oregon and a while ago and we evolve, um, I put in some texts over things that may have changed or additions uh, since then. Also, somebody's asked about avocado oil. Uh, we use avocado oil. It's very expensive, but it has a super high smoke point. When you're cooking, it's like 520. Um, so I actually have mixed it before with olive oil. Now, what's the advantage of the high smoke point? Uh, it doesn't, when, it, when you have a smoke point, then that's when the... When it smokes... When it's damaged. It's being damaged, so... And that's when it puts... If there's something you need to cook at a higher temperature, the avocado oil is a great... Right. ...one to use because you can then cook it higher without it damaging the oil. Right. Okay. Um, one of the people that I learned from in my classes was that they just took broth, beef broth or chicken broth or vegetable broth, and put a small little layer in the pan to cook their vegetables and saute. You just make sure you add your seasonings and watch it really close. But do that instead of adding oils. Bake them, broil now, them. Now the broth, are gonna have a little bit of oil with them, right? That's coming naturally. From, mm, from the maybe oh yeah if from, you're making your own absolutely yeah, yeah 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 I know ours does it has the good gelatin in it which is yeah. really great so um, we're gonna uh, trying to think if there's any other questions that I needed to answer that I haven't answered today I think while you're I thinking of those I'm gonna I'm gonna do a plug for regenerate don't degenerate for those of you who said Jim's just never doing it. Well, he wasn't, and there were a lot of reasons why, and you stopped watching. Come on back, come on back. With our good internet now, I'm able to do it live, so I'm not gonna tell you specifically which time because my, what was that? I don't know. Big loud sounds outside, sounded like Bigfoot. <laughs> I thought that was up in the Northwest. Fireworks oh, or okay. shotguns. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway, with because our internet works so well, I'm able to do it live. I'm going to be doing it every day, probably in our morning time. Five days a week. Five days a week. And and uh, so it's going to be you know a different one each of the five days. We're doing it together. It's, you know, 15 minutes to a half hour. It's going to be a, a decent workout. It's a basic, simple kind of workout. 
hopefully I can get you worked up to where you can do more and more. But come on and enjoy it. This is if you've been wanting to exercise, and really I don't care how hard you work as a homesteader, you need to build all of your muscles, get all your joints going because there are gonna be times when you need them. And if you don't have them prepared, you're gonna injure them, you're gonna be sore and, and we, miserable. We don't even do it for a half an hour. I mean, it's it's probably 15 or 20 minutes and it's plenty for now. Yeah, it is plenty for now. So come on and join. It's on, it, it's a YouTube channel. It's called Regenerate, Don't Degenerate. Uh, if you have trouble finding us, let us, finding it, let us know through email or through comments and we can get you the link if, uh, if you need it. But be watching for it and subscribe to it and that way you get notifications when it does go live and you know that it's happening. So I think that we're going to call that one good for today because it's very late <laughs> and we still need to get this rendered. But we got a lot done. And today. it was a really good day. We're loving, loving, loving our homestead. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you for all the people who are subscribing. Um, this week's blog, uh, I've already written it. It's quite an emotional one. Um, and um, you won't want to miss that one. So sign up for the yeah. For get, the if, you, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, let's get signed up for it so you can be getting these newsletters. They're, they're getting better and better. We're learning how to do it. I forgot to tell you. P.S. <laughs> I've had people to ask me um, to show the food that we are eating so that they'll know the kinds of food to eat. I mean, you can eat whatever you want to eat. So I didn't start with breakfast today, but I did put on one of our snacks and two of our meals. So you'll see those in the video and that's what you're going to be seeing. Yeah, we're not going to be able to video the preparing of every meal and we probably yeah. won't show pictures of every meal that we have. But we're going to show several so you yeah. can have a great sample. It's, it's a lot of pressure. Oh, we got to do something that's good enough to eat. I mean, show, but you know what? We eat simple meals. So we're not just out there having these gourmet meals. We eat simple meals, but we eat enough food. We're going to show you our morning snack. Um, I have walnuts and apples. Uh, this is raisin toast, um, healthy raisin toast, with um, crunchy peanut butter on it, an egg, and two different kinds of vegetables. I have snow peas and asparagus. So this is just Jim's, our snack plate. As we sit and do stuff on the computer, we can just nibble off of it. One thing I want to make sure, don't go hungry. Eat, eat good healthy food. Um, make sure you're eating the healthy food, but don't be hungry. If you eat the wrong and you eat too many carbs, you will absolutely be hungry. But eat the right kind of foods and you won't be hungry. For our lunch today, we're having beans, which I made from scratch some time ago. And I just steamed up my lens. <laughs> um, they are, um, I bought them in Cortez, Colorado, or Dove Creek, Colorado. And they are cooked with a turkey burger from our turkeys. And they have cheese on the top. Then we have cauliflower that we just got at the farmer's market. And it is incredibly good. And I put a little daub, uh, daub little bit pad of real butter on it so that um, it has some good fat. This is uh, cucumbers that are raw and lettuce with the dressing that I made the other day made out of the whey. It never thickened completely but it got quite thick and I was just I'm still able to use it as a salad dressing and it's delicious. So you're like well, you're having chili with cauliflower and salad. That's kind of weird. Remember, we, we want to implement our four food groups. And there's some fat in with the meat and with the um, uh, cheese and in the butter. And so there you go. That's our lunch for today. For our meal tonight, it's very simple. We have salmon that we baked in the oven, and then I took summer squash, zucchini squash, one red potato, 
um, onions and an eggplant and sauteed that in coconut oil serving it with a slice of Ezekiel bread half of a slice lemon over that and pears that we canned with some kefir water that we made this is our dinner tonight yes we'll be hungry later and we'll just have a snack so two days ago I took you to the store and told you the foods that we needed to eliminate in a seven step process so I hope you understand that that doesn't mean I want you to eliminate all seven in one day. If you have a huge problem with drinking soda pop, then that's where I want you to start. If you don't hardly ever drink it, then go to the second one. So eliminate it, but go to the second one. Um, so we're going to talk about each step and what we replace each step with. So our beverage of choice is water. We purify our water. We have well water. It's really good water. And we've tested it. We probably don't have to purify it, but we do. So our beverage of choice is water. We drink water all the time. That's our beverage of choice. Some other things that are, we've found that are okay. This is coconut water. You really have to look at it. Make sure it doesn't have extra natural juices added. This is coconut water, 100%. So you have to really read your labels on it. Coconut water. This is milk, and if you can see, I don't know if you can, there's a cream line across here. This is not raw milk, although we have used a lot of raw milk in the past and would love to, again, but this is slow pasteurized so that it still has the enzymes in it so you can digest it so you're, you're not lactate, uh, you don't need lactate to, in order to drink milk. And then we drink kefir. I've been told that this is one of the best brands because they have so many good things in it. We just drink small little glasses for breakfast. These are the beverages that we drink. We, once in a while, will have a pomegranate juice or 100% grape juice, 100% cherry juice in very small glasses, not even a full juice glass because they're a good antioxidant and they're good for you, but they also have sugar in them, natural sugar. So you just want to make sure that your amounts are a small amount. So that is what we do instead of soda. We get rid of the soda and we replace it with this, but we do not replace it with lots of fruit juices either. Number two was to steer away from fast food places. In order to do this, you have to make some preparations meaning you have to have eaten before you go, or you have to get home before you eat again, or you take snacks or meals with you. You have to prepare, otherwise you can steer right into those places. Now, once in a while, we have to go to a fast food place, but there are certain items you can get on their, on their menus and certain items you can't. And you'll be surprised what you shouldn't use. Even some of their salads are really big. <laughs> in bad things. So we have a place here in Oregon that has uh, grass-fed beef that we are able to go and get a burger there and we can get it wrapped in lettuce with all of the vegetables that we want to and that's the extent of our fast food that we get. Number three was to eliminate all of those oils that were bad for you and this is what we're going to replace them with olive oil, coconut oil. This is um, another kind of coconut oil. I just wanted to show you in case you didn't know it existed. This is actually from Trader Joe's and it comes in little packets. So when I go to work, if I need to cook something there in their kitchen, I can take my own oil because guess what? They use margarine there at the nursing home. Not very smart, are they? And then this is um, Kerrygold. It is uh, grass-fed from grass-fed cows and it's butter. And I believe I told you in the store, this is what you want to work up to, something like this, or making your own butter with your own cows and your own pro um, source of milk. But until then, if you can only uh, afford something else, then just get a different type of butter um, that you can get that um, will be healthier than using the oils and margarine. Do not use margarine. Use nothing as to use margarine. 
Number four is to eliminate white sugar and all of those other sugars. I'm going to combine it with five, which is also to get rid of your artificial sweeteners. So these are some of the sweeteners that we use. It's a raw, unfiltered honey. Local is what you want because if you take, eat the honey regularly in the area that you live in, then that helps with your allergies. This is maple syrup and it's B grade. You want that one is less refined than the A grade. They tout, oh, get A grade, but you want the B grade. And then we use um, co coconut sugar. There are some other sugars, turbine, turbino, I believe, something like that, um, that you can use. But the key to it is to really cut down your sugar. So I mentioned it in the store that in order to make my uh, oatmeal cookies that I make, I cut the recipe down to a quarter cup to a third cup of sugar, period. It calls for white sugar and brown sugar, and I just put one, I can't remember if it's a third or a fourth. And I didn't do that to begin with. I cut it in half and then cut it in half again so that your taste can go down to it. Then I fill my cookies full of um, natural um, coconut and nuts and sometimes dark chocolate, a good dark chocolate, and then um, sometimes raisins. Raisins are full of sugar, so be careful on putting those in there. And when you fill in all those other items, you don't miss your sugar. One of the things that I found when I do make those cookies, and I'm, I just use Quaker Oats cookie recipe, but I add all the other stuff in, is it works really well if you'll just put it in a 9 by 13 pan and cut it up like brownies. It works great like that. Step number six, we're eliminating refined grains. So what I have here is wheat, and this is our wheat meal. And you remember when I was by the cereal aisle and I held up that you couldn't have cream of wheat and malto meal, and I love those. Depending on how fine you set your stone, you can make your own cereal with this. And so you're just grinding it and using it. You don't want to make it way up in advance because it gets rancid as it sits and is um, made. And so you just grind it and use it. This is uh, kamut, popcorn, beans. This is steel oats, and I haven't got those in containers yet. Millet, quinoa, and remember I said don't buy things in packages. Some things you do. Um, this is quinoa. The ingredient is organic white quinoa. So I took it from here and poured it into here. And this was um, cornmeal. So there's so many different kinds of grains. Experiment with them, learn about them. If you have a gluten intolerance, many, many grains don't have the gluten in it. So find out what works for you. And what you want to do is realize it's a carbohydrate. And so you want to go easy on it. And just a word about the quinoa. Quinoa is the only grain that is 100, gives 100% 100 of all of your essential uh, amino acids that you need for your protein. It's the only one. So we use it a lot. Anyway, make use of doing things yourself. Don't be afraid to make your own bread. We found a source for bread that we like, but we also make our own. So experiment, learn, and take baby steps with it. Number seven was to not buy things in cans and bags and bottles as much as you can, cans and bags anyway. So this is real food, real banana, real apple, real Brussels sprouts, real cabbage, real carrots, real radishes, real leek, real potato, real garlic, real eggs from our chickens. And you will be so surprised how quickly you can prepare meals from real food. It's just an amazing piece of information that I learned about and I've learned how to do it. And um, 
I'm excited to continue to show you how to do it. So now that we've learned all about real food, I would like to uh, end with a song that I have made up. So here we go. One singular sensation every little step you take. One thrilling combination of real food that you make. One taste and suddenly processed food will not do. You know you'll never be happy with additives and goo. One moment in your tummy and you will forget the rest. For real food is second best to none. Fun! Real food, give me your attention. Eggs, meat, veggies, we must mention. Real is the one. See you tomorrow.